protests in Israel are still going on. Uh, people are protesting Netanyahu's uh, corruption in response to COVID. Uh, basically the same that is going on in the United States. People protesting the corruption of Trump and the COVID response as well as police brutality. Uh, it looks like uh, Netanyahu's uh, longtime allies are also turning against him, which uh, is like uh, likely means that uh, he could be ousted. Uh, what uh, according to this video, uh, there's been three elections. Um, that have been considered um, inconclusive and Netanyahu's wanting a fourth one. <laughs> nights a week this month, thousands of Israelis have marched to the Prime Minister's official residence, protesting what they see as his bungled reaction to the pandemic. I want you to hear me, our Prime Minister, you disappoint me very, very much, and I was your number one fan. Chefs David El Makayas and Yosef Shitrit drove from Tel Aviv, where they've owned a high-end restaurant since 2013. They've looked past corruption allegations against Benjamin Netanyahu to vote for his party time and time again. But what finally hit home was policies that flip-flopped. I won Likud 20 years. I never believed that I am going to come to, to the protest. Process. I never believed I'm going to do it, but here I am. It's our first time. It's my first time in my life that I come to protest. We don't vote him again. We don't come from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem to give food for people, and we vote for him again. The government's initial response to the pandemic worked. By mid-May, Israel was reporting as few as 10 cases a day, but it came at a cost. Unemployment skyrocketed from 4% to 24% and the government tried to address it by reopening and then backtracking. Business owners felt pushed around, and now the country's reporting about 2,000 cases a day. The protests don't seem to phase Netanyahu, and neither does a corruption trial, which he pushed back, or the fact that results from the last three elections were inconclusive. He's now calling for a fourth election, Police have arrested nearly a hundred demonstrators and served many of them with a citation that fans travel to Jerusalem for up to 10 days. Whoa, they have a citation, a cite, a citation can uh, get you banned uh, uh, from Jerusalem for 10 days. That seems pretty, um, pretty harsh for a punishment. Um, and this is supposed to be a democratic nation. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, I forgot is the uh, Israeli government likes to use water cannons on protesters. Um, uh, similar to uh, how the uh, U the U.S. government was using fire hoses on uh, 
uh, black civil rights protesters during the civil rights movement. Israel has a COVID-19 response team, and it has a protocol to beat back a second wave. But when cases were down, Netanyahu pushed out members of opposing parties, and the members who replaced them aren't following the original plan. Ofer Shalach headed that committee before he was deposed. Most of the Israeli public thinks that Netanyahu acts out of political reasons. And this has to do with the, the size and, and inefficiency, futility of his government, and so on. Uh, once this happens, this, uh, this is the seed of anarchy. You know, I'm Israeli born and raised. I've lived here for the past 60 years. We've never had a situation of such deep mistrust between the public and the, and the government. To Shalach, Netanyahu is not seeing the pandemic as a public health emergency. He sees it as a chance for political survival. He's a coward. He's trying to lead us by cowardice. We Israelis, we the world, will not be led through this crisis by cowardice. What people are seeing for the first time in, in the Netanyahu years is a situation where you, you look at the polls, most of the, uh, the Israelis just think he's handling this very poorly. So it reflects on the whole of his 11-year term, and people are saying this is just not a very good prime minister, and this is a prime minister that acts because he has political considerations in mind, because he has legal troubles. He's not concerned with us anymore. Netanyahu is holding another card. In November, voters might care more about security than the economy, and a recent clash with Hezbollah along the Lebanese border might remind them. Even though Netanyahu has survived crisis after crisis, this could be the beginning of the end for him. He's even losing the support of loyalists who once served him and his family dinner. If the Netanyahu family asks me, and I don't know, if the government asks me that maybe they need to uh, host uh, some uh, president for outside, I don't know, maybe Trump, if the Trump won't want to come now to Israel, I never go now to Balfour. It's, it's not match what we want and what they want, so it's not going to happen in this situation ever. A lot of time, Bibi say, I'm uh, Mr. Uh, security, but uh, now the security is not the issue. Now the economy and the money, this is this situation. If we don't have money and a common good and the people that they have something to eat, the security is not interesting. <laughs> He's quite right. <laughs> if people aren't, uh, <coughs> <coughs> sorry about that. Uh, I agree with him on that. If people, uh, aren't, uh, what, uh, kind of, you know, if they're not fed and, you know, kind of, you know, comfortable. They're not really going to worry too much about security when they got, you know, bigger troubles on the inside compared to the outside. I go to a lot of these. Um, I'm happy she's finally angry enough to go with me, though. The fact that they pushed this law through really pissed me off. <laughs> Last week, Israeli parliament passed a sweeping measure that allows for new laws meant to curb the virus to be implemented within 24 hours without Knesset approval. But critics of this new law think it's just a way for the government to expand its power. They are saying that the cabinet can push through directives um, on the entire population of Israel um, and that the, the Knesset committees, only four of them are relevant, will have 24 hours to approve or reject it. But in addition to that, and this is the part that it really, really made me angry, they also have the power to decide that the Knesset committees on urgent issues, whatever they deem urgent, which they don't define, don't have to go to the committees at all. And not only that, but the Knesset committees, which are relevant, only four of them which exist, can only do anything about it after an entire week. This is absolutely toxic. It is a nail in the coffin for small businesses. It's a nail in the coffin for independent contractors. And I can't believe, I can't believe after everything, and even after the protests that have already happened, that this is continuing. 
It really concerns me when you have like government being um, increasingly expanded at this level. I'm a person who doesn't believe in this, despite the fact that I'm in Likud, that I'm a Likud supporter. Um, I don't think that this is in line with like our values as a party um, and what the platform stands for. And it really, really upsets me that they're using the coronavirus as an opportunity to politicize um, this issue and to push through specific people's um, agendas and things that act against even other figures in their own party, such as the head of the coronavirus committee. Thank <laughs> you.